If you want to create better looking websites, bear with me as we redesign a random website on the internet. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the digital alchemist and as promised today, we'll redesign a random website on the web. Now, I usually have my own process where I do the wireframes and the design all within Elementor Pro and with a tool that I built called Wire Mentor. But not today, because first of all, not everybody is using Elementor Pro or even WordPress. And also, doing it all in the browser works better if you have the experience. So before you even attempt to do that, it's better to know the fundamentals. So today we'll focus on the design. And if you watch the whole video, not only will you learn the process that you can then replicate with any tool, but you will also learn my workflow to create professional, beautiful websites that you can then pass on to the developer team or that you can develop yourself with your tool of choice. Okay, enough talk. Let's dive in. One, finding the candidate. So I decided to randomly pick the accountant niche. So I typed accountant Adelaide in Australia, I guess, because why not? And I actually went a little further and went for page 12. So I started browsing until I stumbled upon this website here, this one. So let's open it and welcome to PCG Professional Consultants Group. Now, before we go further, I just want to stress the fact that I'm not talking bad about the designers who created that website. That website is from 2015. We're in 2021 at the time of recording this video. So I'm sure it was looking decent when he first got out. And you know, the web is just like fashion. It goes really, really fast. So with that in mind, let's try to do some constructive criticism. So let me make the whole thing bigger. And first of all, the first thing you see is that there's way too much waste of vertical space here. Now, when it comes to the overall design, it looks a bit obsolete, but I already talked about that. And if I look at the logo, I mean, this type of logo with the, the old gradients, you don't see that that much nowadays because it does look obsolete. Now for the navigation, this is fine. Maximum seven elements, so it's okay, but I still think it could be less than seven would be better and now if we talk about what we usually call the hero section here so the main section first of all it's not tall enough the image should be bigger and next when it comes to the value proposition it says helping you make smarter decisions about what and then you find the answer about the finances to achieve your personal and financial goals that's way too much text and next too many colors in my opinion i know it's a reminder from the logo here so it's coherent i understand that but still when you just land on the page it's too many things too much text too many colors and next if you scroll down everything goes grayscale but that's for another story because today we're going to focus on the home page here but precisely on the hero section how can we make the first impression better two getting the brief so in normal circumstances, the client will come to you and will tell you what they want for their website. But in this case, as you saw, I just picked a random website and we're going to do the briefing ourselves. And basically the briefing is just a sequel to the mini audit. I'm just going to write down what we just said. So design branding should be better. Vertical space is lost in the header. The design of the hero section is not on par to today's standards and the value proposition is not clear enough. There's too much info and the call to action is lost in the sea of elements because yes, there is a call to action to arrange your free consultation call. Here it is. Now, if you take a look at the tablet and mobile version, it's even harder to actually see what's important on this website. Next, wireframing. So the next logical step once you get the brief is to start wireframing. Now, I have a file that you see here on screen, which is my starter file when I start such a project. And usually it's a bit more complex, of course, but you get the idea. Now, you can do this in Adobe XD, you can do this in Photoshop, you can do it in the GIMP, whatever you want to use. You can do it in any tool that you wish. The principles remain the same. You just want to lay out the structure. Now, let me show you this file quickly. So here we have the grid that we can use later on. Here we have our assets, artboard, Next, I have an identity artboard. And by the way, the color palette model is taken from my branding guide that you can download on my website for free. So initially it was made for Affinity Designer, but you can use it with Adobe Illustrator with a workaround. So if you're interested, just go to casino.com forward slash branding. 
Next, I have an artboard for the old website, so I can always look at the old website while I'm wireframing and building. And then I have the wireframe for the desktop, for the tablet, and for the mobile. And just below, I have some more artboards for the actual design. Okay, let's start the process. So first of all, I'm gonna go to my assets and I'm just going to copy the screenshot. Then I'm gonna go to my old website artboard and I'm just going to scale this up. Okay, and now I can start wireframing the desktop. So let me go into editing mode. There you go. And I'm just going to copy that image here. Go back to the wireframe desktop artboard and I'm just going to start. So let me move the canvas so we see both windows, both artboards. So with the brief in mind, I can start wireframing. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to use a text tool and I'm going to type logo. I'm going to change the font size. I'm going to change the font also because I want something bolder and I'm going to change the color. Okay. Next, I'm just going to drag the text here. I'm going to type value proposition. Let me change the font size. Let me duplicate this. And once again, I'm just going to change it to something lighter. Next, let's create our call to action. So I'm just going to drag a rectangle. Let me change the stroke. And next, I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to type call to action. Let me make this smaller. And let's create a button. There you go. Let me duplicate this. And I'm just going to type menu. And next, I'm going to use this tool to create three lines. Actually, let me just duplicate this one. Let's select all of these. Let's group it together. And I'm just going to put it here in the menu. Okay, so now we have our menu button. Let me move that. Now let's go back to our assets. If you recall in our assets, I had this little icon. So let me go back, select our menu. Let me paste the asset, and I'm just gonna change the color. And there you go. It's already looking much better. We get the logo on the left. You can open the full screen menu on the right hand side and you can go to my account by clicking on the icon. Next, we have our value proposition, our tagline and our call to action. Okay, but one more thing we can add is just a hint that you can actually scroll on the page because now the image is massive and it looks like it's just one screen. So let's do that. Let's go back into editing mode. I'm going to select the rectangle tool and I'm just going to drag a shape and then I'm just going to select a blue color but now it's exactly the same so let me change the blue and let me remove the stroke there you go and now let's go back to our assets and I'm just going to use that icon here let me go back select my rectangle get my item actually let me make it white first okay and I'm just going to select both elements and align it and there you go so let's go back let's take a look yeah it's looking way cleaner so what I'm going to do now I'm just going to speed this up and do the tablet and mobile versions And there you go. Here we have our three devices, so desktop, tablet, and the mobile. And we can still look at the current version on the side. Next, mood boarding. Now I've already covered that in a few videos, but basically mood boarding is just collecting visual clues, elements that you like and that you want to implement in that project. So it's not about copying, it's about getting inspiration, some elements that you may like here or there. It could be the shape of the button, it could be a color scheme, it could be the way they write a text uh, over the images, the overlay and so on, you get the idea. So a mood board can be really small or really big and really long. It really depends on the project because of course you could spend days building the perfect mood board but then again, how much are you getting paid for that project? Next, preparing the assets. 
As you can see, I already have a few assets here. I got some screenshots, I got the old logo, and I have a few icons that you saw in the previous steps. Now, at this stage, I want to look for the perfect image for the hero section, and that's really crucial. You should spend the time to find a very good image. Don't try to skip it. Don't take the first image that you find. I would really spend the time to get the perfect image or even better work with a photographer. That's often what I do. And every time I can, I prefer that option. But sometimes I have to work with stock images. So this is the image I found because we're talking about accountancy and accountancy looks really serious and you know they all have the same kind of images and for the people outside of this industry it looks really really cold so i was looking for an image with someone with a smirk with a smile and when i stumbled upon that one i was like that's the one that's what i'm trying to convey with that design now the next image is a screenshot that i took because i like the color palette so we're just going to use that color palette now usually you spend more time just like wireframing, mood boarding, and so on, but you get the idea. For the sake of this video, we're going to use this color palette. Next, defining the identity. So as you saw, I'm using this color scheme here. So I'm just going to paste this and then let's go back into editing mode. And basically all I have to do is pick the color and then I'm just going to use those colors here. We're not going to use the whole spectrum, but just a couple of colors or even a third one. Let me pick this one so I can remove this. And now let's go back to our assets. I'm just going to copy the logo just because I want to see what it used to look like. Now, in this case, it's just a website redesign, but usually when the logo looks really obsolete, I have a discussion with the client. So basically, if I had to enhance this logo, not do a complete redesign of the logo, but if I just had to enhance this logo, this is how I would proceed. So I would just use the same thing, the rectangles, then I would just clone it and then choose a different font. And I would get rid of the little balls here altogether. Okay, for the sake of this video, I've already done it. So it goes faster. So let me show you what I've done. Now, bear in mind, this is just a five minute redesign. I didn't go in depth, but you get the idea just to make it look more modern. Next, we need to take care of our typography and choose a font. Now, I've already covered that in a previous video, so you could go to a website like Font Pairs or similar, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go faster and show you what I came up with. Next, it's finally time to design our mockup. So first of all, let me go back to our assets. I'm just going to copy the image, then go back to the desktop and I'm going to scale this up okay we still have the model here so this is what we want next let me go back to our assets I'm just going to copy the negative version of the logo so let me go back to the desktop version and I'm just going to paste the logo but as you can see you can't really see it because it's like white on a very clear light background so we need an overlay so I'm just going to create a new layer then I'm going to select the gradient tool so let me drag this okay and now let me select the gradient and I'm just going to select one of my colors in the color palette so for the first color let me pick that one and for the second color I'm just going to drag the opacity all the way to zero and now if we take a look as you can see we can play with the opacity at least on this side. And now let's take a look at our wireframe. We need our value proposition and our tagline. What I can do is start from here and by using the right fonts, let me go back, let me paste it. Now, once again, for the sake of this video, I'm going to paste what I've already prepared. So it says we take care of your finances so you don't have to. If you recall in the brief, that was one of the points that the value proposition wasn't clear enough. So this is what I came up with instead. Next, let's go and copy our call to action here. I'm just gonna paste it here. And for the call to action, I had another ID. So instead of leaving it here, I'm going to position at the bottom left corner of the page. And I'm just gonna start changing. So first of all, the rectangle here, I'm going to give it a fill and I'm going to select my main color there you go and for the stroke i'm just going to remove the stroke altogether now the text is below so i'm just going to 
change that. So now we have our call to action, but I'm going to change it to how we can help. Then I'm just going to make this smaller. Now let's take a look. I think it looks good, but it's a bit too small. So let me select the rectangle, make it bigger. Then I'm just going to select both elements and align those elements. Okay, so it looks better. And then I can just make it bigger. Okay, let me make this bigger. Next, I can select that button. I'm just going to duplicate it and I'm going to change the text to menu. So let me change the font. Now let's go back to our assets artboard. Let me copy the hamburger icon here. Let me zoom out, go back to our design, zoom back in, select our menu button, and then I can just move the hamburger icon here. And as you can see, it's blue and blue, so you can't see it. So I'm just going to select each individual element and I'm going to change the color to white. So it's already much better. Okay, let's zoom back out. So it's almost done. Now let me copy the scroll button. Let's go back and I'm just going to paste it here. Now I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and I'm just going to change the main color to white. And of course, I'm going to change the element here to our main color. And let's make it smaller also because it's a little bit big at the moment. Let's make sure that it's properly aligned. And there you go. So I don't know what you think, but in my opinion, it's way more modern. Now, of course, this is just a first draft. So usually I spend more time. I'm going to tweak a lot of little details, but I know your time is precious. So I'll go straight to the point. Okay. So this is the final result. And as you can see, I added the small user icon here on top. I think we went a long way. And if we take a look at what we had initially, it's even more obvious. So as you can see, we've solved many of the problems that we initially encountered, the vertical space, the navigation, the image, the value proposition. Now let's take a look at a different view. And one exercise you can do is tell me what is the perception you have when you look at the top proposition and what is the perception you have when you look at the current website. This is how we can make a difference as web designers because we can really help businesses show a better image of their company. Now, there's also a way that you can make a difference right now by hitting the thumbs up button because it really helps this channel. And if you want more inspiration, if you want to become a better web designer, make sure you hit subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. And just go through the channel. I got a lot of videos covering the topic and way more to come.